Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, my name is Odin Guan. It's my great honor to be here to introduce the technology now the sailing in the Arctic without icebreak or stand. And also my target is to go more beyond the Arctic, also Antarctic as well. So it takes uh, around uh, 20 minutes, uh, they allow. Then I show a more practical way. Even the Arctic is uh, uh, melting, melting. Then it's another uh, opportunity and threat to Arctic. So I show you more practical uh, solution. First one uh, with DSME profile, and second, some projector. Because we are building Arctic Yamal energy carrier. We already delivered the nine vessel because we contract uh, from uh, since 2014, but after three years later, we deliver first vessel. And uh, first cargo loading in last year, December, but this year, just uh, yesterday, we deliver 100 times cargo to east and west. So it makes some clean global. And uh, finally, what is the technical technology we have in our LNG carrier? So we start the 1990s for LNG carrier business. After that, we first uh, deliver uh, LNG RV degasification vessel. And year 2014, we deliver world first uh, LNG FSRU. After that, year 2015, we deliver FLNG to Malaysia Petronas. Then still also, uh, year 2016, world first two-stroke engine uh, to the LNG carrier. And end of 16, first sail away from our shipyard, it was Arctic LNG carrier. Never ever built this kind of vessel. You may imagine how big of the icebreaker, but I show you how to the technology to break ice with this autonomous biggest uh, ice breaking LNG carrier. And still we are developing some other type of LNG business uh, together with uh, some ice shuttle or even ice bunkering, LNG bunkering vessel as well. So this project we start uh, a contract in 2014, but before we started for this Arctic business from year 2008, so we did a lot of the, our own model test at Arctic in Helsinki, and also doing several different type of vessel we did. Then finally, we sailed away delivery in the March year 2017. Then we did ice trial in Arctic uh, region, but still due to global warming, the ice thickness is uh, less and less. So we almost two months to find out the reasonable ice in the far, far north even through the Karagate, the Karachi, Latepsi, so inside. Finally, we found 30, 40 kilometers of ice, and then we start to breaking. But the result much higher than our expectation. Then also this vessel, you currently uh, Arctic icebreaker is around 150 meter long, and the beam is around 30 meter. But this vessel, 300 meter long, and the beam is 50 meter almost four times bigger the area uh, than current uh, Arctic icebreaker using nuclear power, power, something. But we still have very good enough the power using Agipod system. So we adopt each 15 megawatt of Agipod to adopt this vessel. And also the design capability of breaking ice is 2.1 meter maximum. And also the pressure ice, four meter. So in case of a car gate, there are a maximum 15 meter, one five meter of the ice ridge we break through. I'll show you a video later. So this also, finally, we have four different ship owners, one Russian subcomplot, the six vessel for TK, five vessel, the Greeks, Dynagas, and three vessel for MOL Japan. So still we continue delivering vessel. Then you can imagine how big of this vessel, Currently, the biggest icebreaker of Russian, and also secondary, our the Yamal Arctic Energy Carrier, third one, Eiffel Tower. But actually, the length height of the Eiffel Tower is uh, almost the same. But uh, recently, uh, finally, they made some antenna tower on top. So total height of Eiffel Tower, 324 meters. But in terms of total capacity, still, it's a very big, and uh, still uh, self-breaking ice in the Arctic. So this cargo, 172,000 cubic meter, can 
carry only one day for Korea. So that's why we provide the 15 vessel that continuously carrying LNG from Russian Sabeta to Korea, Japan, China. And also this vessel in ice, we did seven knots in 1.5 meter ice and open sea 20 knots, almost 37 kilometer per ki uh, hour per kilometer. So it was much, much higher than our original expectation, our design. Then, actually, the Yamal Arctic area, very, very cold, harsh environment. So temperature, minus 52 degrees Celsius. And also thickness, maximum, uh, first year, 2.1 meter. And then, how to uh, breaking ice? So we provide the front edge, 70 millimeter of very special, strong steel plate we provided. And total production power, 45 megawatt using three Azipod system. So in order to make the winterization of minus 52 degrees Celsius, we provide the autonomous of the effort to keep the warm temperature inside against the very cold outside. It means any kind of the heating system, like electric heating, second, glycol water heating, or steam heating, any combination depend on the, the space, whether the safe zone or harsh zone. Then, I mentioned, we even contracted the March of year 2014, but personal delivery, the April, uh, March also of the year 2017. So we already delivered nine vessels, and end of this month, we deliver tens of this Arctic vessel. So remaining five vessels, we will deliver next year. But according to the uh, Russian uh, Novatek and Jamal, still total energy production is much higher than expected. So still the Russian Yamal project uh, require more earlier delivery of this vessel. Because uh, the Yamal area, very cold. You can imagine the temperature of the Qatar, almost in summer season, 40 or higher, 50 degrees Celsius. But in Yamal, wind minus 50. So the gap between the Qatar and uh, Yamal, almost 100 degrees gap. So that's why more the easier product, production of the LNG in there. So uh, what kind of technology we adopt this vessel? Actually, you can see here Sabeta, almost not the center, but uh, almost yeah, slightly left side of the Russia. But it's a lot of the gas and uh, oil and any minerals. So but uh, never consider this kind of vessel in Arctic. But we start of, to make some <coughs> way. Then there are several different technologies here to first how to breaking ice with a nice propulsion system. Before, only consider ice breaker, but we are building commercial vessel. How to carry safely of the LNG cargo inside and the breaking ice with a safer for crew members and how to protect environmental issues. So that's why we did. Then this is a kind of this animation you can see here. So this vessel can acting as a double acting. So go bow first like this one, or even stern first. So either both way can operate. So we did some ice model test. Then also you can see here, each vessel can dual direction, breaking ice. Either bow, either or stern, depend on condition. Then second thing is some hull strengthening. Still 1.5 or 2.1 meter is not easy, taller than my height. And then came breaking ice by herself. So we have to, a lot of the test and simulation against the iceberg. Collision like this one, then internally, no impact, no damage inside. So we did this kind of a lot and test and together with all Christian society and also with the Russian Institute. So in maker, then another one uh, important thing is winterization. So very harsh environment uh, temperature, minus 52, but all equipment like radar system or any machinery should be protected or de-icing or anti-icing, that kind of thing also inside we have to provide because very cold temperature come into the engine room or even in accommodation. So we have to put heating system inside. 
and also some uh, like uh, blackout we have to provide easily some starting of jet and even jet engine so a lot of the uh, analysis of heat distribution that's kind of thing to make a good state at the Arctic uh, currently. Then, how to develop of the hull fall, like this one? So, it's very important because this Arctic LNG carrier is uh, different than icebreaker because uh, this vessel almost 30-40% uh, uh, in Arctic zone, but remain. So, 50% also in open sea. So, we have to consider not only purpose for icebreaking, so other proposal to good uh, state at the open sea. So very difficult, uh, difficult to develop in both. And also this vessel have to breaking ice in the bow or stern. So we did a lot of the model test to develop by our own technology. Then finally we did also good in open water and ice breaking capability. So there are uh, something. So each one is ice breaking, another one open sea water performance. So we did one stone to kill two birds. So this technology, so not only the uh, some hull pump, but also the structural integrity is very, very important. So we did ice load estimation, and also the cow contamination system also very important because always the vessel is uh, some heating against the ice, so inside, LNG should be well protected and can observe external forces. And then how to withstand this one? So we very careful of design of this vessel and also detailed design. Each corner and here you can see uh, not only the uh, skin, but also we protect the bottom as well. Always the ice is inside and bottom. So all this kind of the design, then we made a very good vessel. Then this one can show you the internal cow containment system. Even heating with the ice. The coupler base of the NO96 system is to provide flexibility and allowance to absorb local deflection from ice impact pressure. So According to a, a DSME study, effect, so NO96 type 170K LNGC with ice class operates so with low only risk this and reliable performance. can carry LNG safely in the Arctic. So this is one of the propulsion system. Is uh, still we are working work together with uh, ABB Finland, and then uh, very good agile system because uh, you can see uh, this propeller uh, made of stainless steel. Then directly. So grinding sometimes when the approaching to the ice is like a ice mixer. So grinding ice by propeller itself. So then we also estimate then how to make the uh, some turning ability or breaking ice in any way. So we simulated so each agiport can operating 360 degree operating, then can make a much good turning ability. And this is also showing uh, during the actual model test. Then another one thing is how to, because the even very cold temperature, but LNG cargo tank is so open for heat ingress inside. So always some vaporizing of the cargo natural gas itself, and it's not enough even to adding some additional gas into the this vessel. So we have total six engines and three as It make a good electric propulsion system. So we use 100% LNG. So it's good for environmental of the Arctic. So because the still uh, we are talking about the MEPC 70, uh, 73 session, so reduce uh, sulfur, sulfur globally by January 1st of 2020, we have to reduce the sulfur from 0.5%, but actually LNG is a zero sulfur. And also we can reduce the NOx, TO3, then almost zero NOx, and CO2 also when we using LNG, we can reduce 23% of CO2. So for uh, next decade, over 10 years or 20 years, the LNG will be main propulsion, fuel for maritime. 
So I'll show you how to construct this Arctic Range vessel in our shipyard. You may know uh, normal average carrier. The cost is around uh, 200 million US dollar. But this vessel, 320 million US dollar because of the winterization, ice breaking capability, electric propulsion, as for the something. But this was why uh, through the Northern Sea Road, breaking ice. Very easy construction in our shipyard only. So also we did, uh, because uh, this vessel is uh, uh, focused for Arctic, so we have to do ice test whether the performance is uh, enough or if we fail, the vessel will be canceled. Because total 15 vessel, total budget was uh, almost uh, 5 billion US dollar. So that's why very, very important for us. So we did autonomous uh, ice strike test, either even in the level ice, one point f even 1.5 or even 2 meter, and uh, fresh ice, 4 meter. Finally, ice reached 15 meter. So we did all tests, and another important thing is uh, turning ability. So all the guaranteed figure we met, and higher than original guaranteed figures. So we also almost uh, two months to try to ice trial. You can see here, we start from Muramaska, then this is Nova Jemila Island, and go to in the Karachi. But still, using a helicopter or a satellite, but the ice thickness and property is not enough. So then we test it, and you may know well, drilling of ice and checking the property, something, but go far, far north. So final let us see. We found 30, 40 kilometer level ice. Then thickness 1.7 meter, good enough. So we did 300 meter breaking ice. Then performance much higher than expected. So this is the first ice trial of our Yamala range carriers. So this is the drone sound. Nowadays, even in Arctic, we use a drone for take uh, movies. Uh, this is level ice for bow first, weather test. Then this is turning test. Uh, originally, we guaranteed 3.5 kilometer turning diameter, but we did uh, 1.7 kilometer almost uh, half the initial turning ability. I think this is a uh, uh, first in large vessel and capable 1.7 kilometer turning diameter. Otherwise, when you're using just uh, not as you put, straight uh, propulsion, then maybe 10 kilometer turning, it's very big to uh, have uh, some uh, direction to turn. So this is ice reach, total uh, 15 meter. You know, the in ice, on the top only 10%, remain 90% underwater. 
So looks like very small, but we made a uh, 50 meter drilling. Finally, we got, but finally we breaking through this Karagate ice ridge. So sometimes the underwater, you know, like uh, the swan, very fast uh, operating. So the propeller direct grinding ice, even inside. Because uh, uh, breaking 50 meter ice, it takes time. You can see uh, some water back. So finally, we break through. So except Antarctic, you can go any the Arctic area using our Ellen carriers. Then still also we are uh, developing uh, next generation of Arctic energy carrier. Not only Russia, but I think the still Alaska also they have some uh, plenty of gases. But only the summer season uh, uh, year round they are using the Trans Alaskan pipeline. But they have to consider due to global warming something problem of the pipeline. Then it should go through the Bering Strait. Then have to use this kind of vessel. So, uh, some our measured data on ice property, then we can make a more uh, reasonable and also a practical solution to reduce capex and increase the opex as well. So, some design road and measured road, because still our performance is quite nice. So, you can optimize uh, some trade off like that. So, all those things we are doing for next generation. Even some icebreaker of even uh, USCG or USA or even Russia. So future icebreaker will do with energy fueled icebreaker of that. Still, we also discuss with uh, some other countries. Then, still, the next generation will use a smart ship design. So we call it this DS4, DSME smart ship solution uh, 4.0. Industrial levels of 4.0. So we are also working together with Intel and Naver business platform to make a good uh, cloud system to communicate uh, through satellite. Even Russia, we use a Coronas system, or in other area, we we'll use a GPS or other thing. But still, also another thing is cyber security. So well protected ship itself and easily communicate. What is smart ship? So it's a digitalization and connectivity. So all those things we are combined in our vessel. So next the future, if you want some any other different type of the Arctic vessel, you can do with a smart solution. Then uh, principal activity event in Russia, also first uh, he named. Originally the first vessel was uh, subcomplete Yamal, but uh, due to some accident of the chairman of the Total, the vessel name changed. Christopher de Magari, Magari, and then he named, then this photo is the first push button of the LNG shipment to energy carrier. So after this vessel, so just one year, Tom, we made 100 times of LNG shipment to east and west. Still, some cargo to Korea, China, still operating. Then, second thing also, uh, 3rd of January uh, this year, Mr. Friend Moon, with the DSME, so he mentioned, he expressed uh, very proud of the, this technology to go to Arctic. So I think it's another Arctic Circle uh, forum, but he showing, so Korea tried to go without any hurdles. And then uh, also we did uh, very, very nice, and we tried to keep environmental friendly in Arctic without using any oil, only the LNG currently to go. And then keep environment, keep people, and sustainability in Arctic for this one. Thank you so much.